have a small window to make this kind of work in the laning stage. But if they don't manage to kill Arteezy a bit early, this lane is going to get pretty damn hard really fast. And do they have the options to kill Arteezy early is what I'm looking at. I, maybe. Like, Rubik has a lot of nuke damage. You will be really strong at, like, level 3 with Mu with the Celestial Hammer plus Starbreaker combo. You got to burst him right away, and I think he knows that, and he'll itemize in a way where he's hard to burst, as we already see that he has a bunch of stats lined up in a magic stick in his stash, just dropping a sentry to block the big camp. No Quite worries. good. Indeed, indeed. And uh, what about our mid matchup? Because that's something which has been really important for Nouns is that Gunner has a good game because he is the tempo controller of this team. You know, if he doesn't do right. well, Nouns will tend to struggle. He should be fine, honestly. Like, this this matchup isn't that difficult, I think. I think Gunner's just a really good mid player, but so is Abed at the same time here. They should just be a wash here. And I learned recently that if you just Ooh. buy the shard, yeah, nice D word there. If you just buy the shard on Pango, you get out of coil for free, yeah. so it makes you magic immune. So this matchup, which Why I thought a was a lot better, isn't as good as I was thinking. But your first couple rotations, we knew no Rebellion as a team. They love to make rotations onto this mid lane. So that can happen before the 15-minute timer, and that will punish Pango quite a bit. And we know Crit loves to gank off its lane. Damn, look at this fighting going on around the uh, the, the one-minute runes. This is crazy. The bounty runes, everyone's scrapping, but uh, Shopify coming up strong. They're, uh, they're going to get all four. Yeah. All right, game's over. Call it. Game two <laughs> I mean, on the way. That's a 1k gold advantage just right off the bat there, getting four bounty runes. That's quite going to hurt all of your other lanes because you can get your early timings on the Lycan. That gets even closer to that Helm of Iron Will where you can sustain in the side lanes as well. Arteezy will be that much closer to maybe getting his boots as well. He bought another Ironwood branch. He already has four. The man just brought is bringing a fifth. All right, he's stat he started up, ready to go. <laughs> is that his kind of answer to this Dawnbreaker hero then? Because I guess they're going to be brawling a lot, you know? These are two very kind of... I'm not sure if lane-dominating heroes is the right word, but they like to bully each other, so... The one with the most stats is just going to be able to be more effective, I guess? It's a... Uh, he's not going to buy any regen, and Fly is going to give him a bunch of tangos, and he's just going to use his branches to eat tangos. Easy peasy. Yep, that is the strat, and he has one salve in case things do go wrong. Yeah, in case it gets messy. Yeah. Well, over on the mid lane, things off to a pretty normal start. Malbad just shoving in the wave with those uh, orbs and getting a ton of harass out onto Gunner at the same time. And uh, oh, nice little dodge there from Malbad as well. Great start from the puck, actually, as uh, he's won the HP trade, but going even in CS at the moment. Yeah, I mean, this mid lane should be a wash, I would imagine. I imagine to see a lot of, like, action in this top lane. That should be the most one that's really going to be heavy in the fighting. The bot lane is just going to be crit just trying to pull waves. Lycan's a hero that really has no kill threat unless you get some, like, wolf block. It should have no business getting a kill if you're Lycan in this lane, right? You potentially yeah. can't really die either, I think, for the side of Rebellion, because Life Surge is just not that type of carry that's going to kill you in the laning stage. So it's all going to be about top lane or probably first blood will happen. Unless yeah. some outplayed happens in the mid lane or something. I mean, even though there's an undying down in the bottom lane, you don't think it's going to be a result in any kills because obviously sapping away at two strength heroes is uh, mm. kind of going to hurt. Yeah, it'll hurt him, but I think Crit's just going to pull waves or he's going to drag waves by himself on Saber. Like, there's going to be very little hero to hero interaction. All right, we're getting some water runes Radiant's here in this mid lane. I mean, Obed's shown a little bit of uh, aggressiveness here so far. He might actually yeah. zone out Gunner here as well if he wants to. Oh, yeah. he's on him. Look at him go. Once again, dodging the shield crash here. Gunner, though, he's got the water rune, so it's just right clicks, but Abed absolutely peppering Gunner here, really not letting him see the wave. And right now, that's not showing in the CS, but over time, it, it might start to. Yeah, I mean, it might not show exactly in the CS deficit here, but it's going to show an economy for sure, because Gunner's going to have to keep bringing more region. If you look at him right now, his bottle's empty. He's bringing some tangos, but that's... I don't even know if that's going to be enough to lane. I think Ob is just going to sit on the hill. He's got good lane control right now. This lane is definitely a disaster now for Gunner. Oh dear, we'll start to see that affect them as time goes on, and it's Gunner. not stopping here. Gunner's in again. Arbed, he's taken a lot of damage from the creeps, though. Is that going to stop him? He's going to dodge a tower hit there, blows him up. Down goes Gunner, and that'll be first blood for Arbed. Solo kill in the middle lane. Yeah, I mean, I think Gunner realized there, like, he's in a really bad situation, so what he's going to do is he's going to trade as much as he can. Realizes he kind of has to give up first blood there if he wants to come back to lane, or Abed would just, like, bully him for, like, the entirety of the laning stage there. So, a little unfortunate for him, but at least he's coming back to the point where now Abed's a little bit low. That's a hell of a silver <laughs> lining there, Phil. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> That's the best you can do. It would have been worse if you would have just 
stayed in the lane, just not getting any CS because he has no HP. Yeah, sugarcoating a brick somewhat there, but we'll see what he can do with this. Meanwhile, on the top lane, a little bit of action as uh, Arteezy getting pretty low. Lift ups there, moves on top of him. The right clicks are coming in, and Lelis brings him down. Arteezy going to be the second kill here in this game, and they're looking for Fly as well. There comes a swing, swing, smack from the Starbreaker, and Moo is going to kill him. It's Lelis with the double kill on the top lane. That went downhill really, really fast for Shopify. Yeah, that one exactly is like kind of explained earlier at this level three timing of the Dawnbreaker. Like they had to make use of this if they wanted to win this laning stage. And will they be able to do that again? I think it might be difficult to do so. And right now, Layla oh, ran like, down. I save save like too. Oh, the cookie saves him. Crit's gonna keep him alive. Wolf blocks. Hello. Yamsun. Yamsun. He's the one who's gonna fall. Crit blows up with a shotgun. Sable like coming back in. The wolf's doing work there for sure. And it looked like Sableye was in trouble, but in the end, it's the carry who dies. Lelis is limping back to base as this high octane laning phase continue. He's on top lane, Moo trying to walk away Ooh, here as well. The right clicks won't be enough, but even so, that's another hero walking back to base. So Shopify stabilized things up in the top lane at the moment. And with Yamsun dying, it has to be said, this is looking like the Shopify's laning phase at the moment. Yeah, even though they had that good kill on Arteezy on the top lane, like Shopify still have like such a big lead just because they're not shutting down this Lycan whatsoever and Abed is just destroying mid lane in a one versus one here. Didn't really expect it, but he is level six now. And I could see Crit making some rotations if he does want to end up buying a little more region because I think if you just drop the coil on Gunner now, not even level six, he might just be dead. Crit rotating to the middle lane. What an unusual circumstance. He may or may not do this game because I feel like he is winning his lane. Yeah. And this is kind of the concern I saw with the Lifestealer pick as well. You're not shutting down a Lycan with a Lifestealer. It's it's no pressure. You just kind of farm. But Lycan's a little bit better at that in the farming department. And plus them getting some kills just made things even worse here. So, yeah, 2k gold lead at four and a half minutes. It's not good. It's not pretty. Not ideal. We'll see what Nouns do to uh, equalize this. I mean, do you want to see them do anything in particular? Like any rotations you want to see them make? I mean, the six minute rune, for sure. You can't let Abed get this. All but right, both well. teams realize this, so we're bringing six heroes to the mid lane, baby. Let's go. It's a brawl. Down at the bottom, we've got the fight going on, but it's Fly up at top, who's being beaten down, and Lelis is going to scoop that one up. Abed is going to bottle the haste rune, though, so that is the headline here. A little bit of fighting down at the bottom rune as well, but no one dropping down there. Yeah, I mean, they got the Disruptor, but more importantly, Abed did get the rune. I don't think you're too sad about if you're Rebellion. It doesn't really change your lead by very much. And now Abed has this tool. He's got the haste available with the coil. Could make a rotation to kill Moo if he wants to. Life's there a bit harder, but he doesn't have a point in rage yet, but he is saving his skill point, so. Yeah, and I think it's it's going to be tricky as, uh, once again, the Dawnbreaker just being chased away, but you can't really play under your tower for like the next two minutes or whatever it is until the haste rune runs out. But at the same time, you do really don't want to get caught out by Abed here and give him an even better game, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm looking at Saber right now. Helma Dominator is completed now for pretty much. And when you play against Lycan, this hero doesn't really have great comeback mechanics. You can compare it to Beastmaster in a lot of ways, but this patch, you're not designed to win as Beastmaster. You stack Ancients, you'll come back eventually. You don't have that option with Lycan, and that's kind of like the, stre the strength of playing against the hero right now is you can, you can punish it. But this hero is even stronger than Beastmaster in so many ways if he gets a good laning stage. And that's really bad news right now if you're now looking at this like and just sitting at the top of the net worth here with the puck. They're not going to be able to answer this very well. I mean, you have Pango who can do it, but that's not until a bit later until he starts getting the Ags. But the start that Gunner's having, that's a long ways from now. And the high octane play with a haste room we were looking for is uh, just going to be farming the enemy jungle. So There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty close here to the Witchblade, huh, on Abed. I think right now he's just going to get his farm, and then once you get this Witchblade, you're going to make heroes like the Undying and even the Pango to some degree, and especially Rubik, their life hell. You're just going to have so much damage. Yes, in the top lane, Arteezy just chasing back the uh, Dawnbreaker again and again. Look at how poor this Dawnbreaker is. My god. Moo just not having a lane at all. This pick, at the moment at least, is not seeming to have worked for Nouns. Yeah, Layla stole all his kills. <laughs> I mean, unironically, he, he actually needed those kills pretty badly because he's not really getting much farm in the right-click department. So, like, having those couple extra kills would have been really nice for him. But at yeah. the end of the day, you just got to make sure you get the kill. So I want to talk about something that I really dislike this game, and it's going to be Yamsun's build. He's going straight into Radiance, into Manta. And, like, 
I normally say there's nothing universal in Dota that's like an absolute, but I think Armlet on Lifestealer might be one of them. Well, uh, in the middle lane there, moving over the creeps to help push the middle tier one tower. So uh, Sableye well, helping bot, out, yeah. but up at top, flies being lifted back. The glimpse is there though. Once again, Lennison and Husky looking to run down this kill as RTZ just pieces out in the trees, wants nothing to do with this. And Fly will take the full dominating, just picking up yet another kill. I mean, he's having a good game on Layla's at least. Mid lane, Gunner's coming in to try and defend this one. I mean, they fortified up, so they really want to kind of do some damage here, but it's, it's not looking like they're going to be able to do a whole lot, but Arbet just behind the tower now has the Witch Blade as well, so that right click is going to be so annoying for the Pango. Yeah, they're going to try and defend this, but as you can see, Saberlight sending more creeps in, denying the rune real quick, and then this is a really cool play. I actually like this play a lot because he, he realizes he can't really pressure that much right now against the Lifestealer, mm -hmm. so he's helping get the mid lane while still just farming bot lane. I think he actually probably could bully out Yamsun with this creep as he is going to bring it back. However, he did a lot of damage to mid lane. He's kind of just helping his team out here. Yeah, yeah. That level 7 timing on the Lycan is so painful. And uh, Lifesteal doesn't really have that many other options at the moment. So, like, does this Radiance mean that he's just not really going to be turning up to fights very much early on? The Lifestealer? Oh, hold on. Uh, no, no, we're chilling, we're chilling. You can answer. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think Yamsun just wants to farm it up here, but I unfortunately think even when you finish this Radiance, Lifestealer is a hero that is deceptively squishy, especially because he is playing against the Razor as well, but Fly yet again is oh. just going to... No, not yet. Yeah, Moo couldn't quite get out of that kinetic field, and now he's the one taking damage. Quick road some rotation through, and it's going to be Moo going down once again, and Husky is also going to be on the receiving end of RTZ as he gets himself a double kill up here in the top lane. Yeah, I think they're trying to realize that, like, the only lane that they can pressure right now, right, Gunner in the mid lane. Yeah, the coiled. creeps are here. The creeps are here. <laughs> and then comes a Lycan eventually as well, but he's not even required. <laughs> they're going to get the kill onto Gunner just with the coil and the creeps. And now this tower is going to fall. Nouns are crumbling at the moment. It's an early start for Shopify, but 4k gold advantage at 11 minutes in. This is not good. I mean, you're playing versus a Lycan too. That's like the scariest part of all of this right now is this lead that they have can often turn into a very, very quick game if you can't stop this potential that he has of farming right now. And when it gets to the Helm of the Overlord, it's only going to get it worse here. And which of their heroes can really stop Saberlight right now? They, I feel like they need to find a way to gank him. He has no shapeshift right now. I realize RTC is kind of an appetizing target round right now because he's not very strong. He just has treads. He's level 6, not having the best game ever. But his two cores are just going to carry this game way harder than he can if they don't stop this like and Puck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Arteezy has been a bit of an expert on avoiding ganks as well, so actually killing him yeah. might be kind of tricky. Saberlight has not been an expert in that field, so maybe if they kind of like <laughs> read the field a little bit on like past performances, they might be able to find an opening there. But for now, they're just going to take a trade. They do have Moo with level 7, so I'd like to see them... It's going to be a little bit hard. They're going to have to use Roll as well with the Solar Guardian. And I unfortunately think Yamsun is going to have to join a fight pretty soon here if they want to win it. Because unfortunately, just the numbers advantage is the network's just too bad if they want to have a fight that's like four on four. Yeah. It's not going to work, so... Again, we'll see as uh, Coil comes out once again, dodging the shield crash, meaning he's not even going to be that tanky now. I mean, Fly's going to drop the ultimate, but Gunner's still dying regardless as uh, Fly goes down as well. Husky looking over towards Arbet. Arbet, he just wants to take down that tombstone. And now looking over towards Husky. Husky, he's trying to fight, but he just can't. Arbet gets another kill here as he's just feeding on people in the middle lane. And now down at bottom, they're going to go onto the life stealer, but he infests inside the creep to get away. And Yamsun will be all right. Yeah, this is one of the things that makes the Life Stealer versus Razor matchup really annoying. Even if you infest, the static link will still persist there and drain your damage. So if you pop out, you still have no damage here. But I do get the fact of why he's going the Radiant. So like, you do have the ability to do the little bit of burn damage while you're being drained. I'm just afraid his survivability is going to be not enough. He does have the Solar Garden. He does have the Soul Rip eventually. It's only level one right now. We'll see what Husky decides to level next. It's a little and concerning, but he does need to keep his farm up right now. That's like the big thing. Yeah, yeah. 
And with two silences on the board as well from the Puck and the Disruptor, it's going to be really hard to make sure you use that Rage, but then don't use it too early to the point where you're vulnerable. Like, it's so important to get it right this game. As Arbed's going to just unleash onto Moo. Moo snaps the cable off right away. Is it going to be enough, though? Moo, unfortunately, looking like he is going to drop here, and that is another death for the Dawnbreaker. Just not coming online. Four, zero, and one. <laughs> Arbed is owning. Yeah. I see Mu queuing up an Aghanims here as the first item. This is quite unusual, mm. but versus the Lycan and given the state of the game right now, I, I think the read is actually correct here. Because if they manage to make Yamsun unkillable and can just do some type of man fighting and outlast him here while Gunner is also getting on the back lines and hopefully killing these squishies like the Disruptor and the Snapfire. We've got a roll going. We, we do indeed, yeah. Gunner, initiation into mid lane. They just want to target down Fly. Go for the easy pick off, and they will be able to do that. He drops the ulti with his last breath as Husky under the tower just being chased down by Sableite. That's going to be another kill. They've traded supports right now, and now, now it's just trying to hold their own against this dragon, which is doing so much work to Gunner. They need to chase back these creeps. They want to actually try and kill them off, but Sableite's just going to resummon, and that'll put an end to that. But he did lose the dragon, and he got a ancient ice oh, shaman, goodness. so that's, that's a net loss right there and a half. Well, the odds from a partner, esportsbet.io, not looking good at all for nouns at the moment. 10.75 to 1.03 for Shopify. That is intense. <laughs> yeah, it's quite intense. But the game state is also intense. So I don't blame him too much for that one. Yamsun, however, there is redeeming qualities here. He does have the Relic online. So getting closer to that Radiance. So they definitely need to just like hold on for a little bit. Try not to feed too many kills here. Get the Diffusal Blade on Gunner. That's coming soon as well. And then I think you just really need to punish the fact that Rebellion likes to play a bit aggressively on a couple of heroes like Abed, maybe Saberlight. These are like some piggy banks here that are just waiting to be cracked open. <laughs> I love that terminology. It's so. It's basically, once they have this Radiance, it's not so much nouns going out looking for action, but more them looking for opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you can see how spread out Rebellion is right now. You can take advantage of it. So Rebellion will get a huge lead if they continue to play this way, and as summon. long as they don't die on the side lanes. It's so sad to watch them commit so much to trying to kill off these uh, these Helm of the Dom creeps, and then AG just resummons them every time. Yeah. But he does have to go back to his uh, ancient camp to get something out, unless he wants to settle for something else. Wait, is that? That's a big wolf. Is that his own wolf he <laughs> did it on? All right. <laughs> oh, he did it on Layla's wolf. Oh, Le oh right. Stole... I was going to say, I, I swear yeah. that doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. It's not exactly what he wants, because when that timer expires, that will also be gone there. So. Yeah. Well, he just didn't want them to get the gold as well. Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, there you have it. Now he got a, a good creep, finally. Indeed. And I'm wondering what they're waiting for on Rebellion before they make another play. They've taken most objectives in the game now, so they're getting close to the point where they just want to choke out the map here and make sure that Nouns can't farm anything, as the lead hasn't really gone past 5k for some minutes now. But I do believe that's going to be RTC's <laughs> BKB timing is their next type of objective they're looking at. Yeah, yeah, and that was really, really close to Jansen losing his Radiance there, actually, just because, I don't know, I don't know how he does it. Sableite, he's got the Zuma eyes, yeah. as he was able to uh, keep an eye on, on the courier and actually almost uh, kill off Jansen's courier there, which would have been insane. But luckily, Jansen was able to defend his uh, noble steed. As you see Arteezy in his positioning right now, he just dodged a four-man gank right there, a three-man smoke. This man... It, I bet when you're playing against, it must be very, very, very frustrating. It kind of feels like he has like map hack in a way, but it's really just game sense. He knows when the ganks are coming. You try to make them happen. Like you might be able to kill him in the laning stage, or maybe he'll dive your fountain and give you gold. But you're not smoke ganking this man. No. He's gonna avoid every single one of those. He's been insane in this season, actually, in yeah. particular. I mean, uh, the major we saw a lot, of, uh, like a, a decent amount. But during this DPC, he's just read every single team like an absolute book. It's been so impressive. And now, Chop Fire Belly and again, gonna grab themselves an Aegis on Arbed as well. This puck is just an absolute beast right now. Oh dear. Now, I mean, uh, they, they're able to plateau at the very least. But... You already know at one point Arbed is going to use this in a very aggressive manner. Probably over aggressive. And that's like one of the weaknesses of Rebellion right now. Sometimes when they're a little far ahead, they like to have a little bit of fun. And I think if that ends up happening, Nouns do have a lineup that 
potentially can get really strong. I think, you know, carry Razor and Lycan aren't going to scale better than the side of Nouns here. It'll be close because I think Dawnbreaker does have a lot of room to grow as well if she does want to go outside of this pure support build and get for a little bit more damage and not just go for her straight Agnums. I'm hoping that it transitions into like a Shard Deso later on and tries to become a physical right click here at some point. Yeah, and this is kind of going to be like a exercise in discipline from uh, Shopify as well, right? Which we really didn't see from them in their series versus wildcard. Like, they, they still got a pretty easy win, but there was a few moments, five right as well, in those series where they kind of gave away a bit more than they should have. Yeah. And again, in the interviews, they were very chill about it. They were just like, yeah, you know, Bulb was saying like, <laughs> you know, we, we, all, we all saw it. We all know what happens. Yeah, it is what it is. It's just how they play sometimes. And bot lane here, they're trying to flush him out here. They got the wolves on Layla's, and they got the glimpse. That's yep. the combo. It is indeed, it is indeed. The wolves with the scouting, the glimpse comes in, and down goes Lullis. For the first time this game, I believe. And Abed with the Aegis, look where he's at. You already know. Yep, on top of Husky here, on top of the Life Stealer as well. And Tombstone will not be defended. Yamsun jumping out, trying to look for an opportunity here, but again, cannot use Yamsun the rage. Needs to get out he of needs here. to rage at some point, trying to bring down Arbet. Oh, he's going for the TP. Is there nope. enough damage? Yes, there is. Yamsun goes down. The carry is dead on the side of Nouns, and the rest of the team. Oh, no. Not more. Not more. They're looking for the mid laner, and I think they're going to find him. Gunner's going to fall as well. Saberlight and Fly with an excellent setup there. My god, you think you're safe and you're just not. Yeah, this is a 2 1 2 Dodo I talk about, where you play two heroes on both side lanes and one in the mid lane, try to farm both jungles, but at the same time, Gunner's like, oh, he got bottom. They all must be bottom, right? Nope. They're still hanging around in that top lane and get a plus one for that. And that's how net worth leads start to explode, because now they have both jungles to farm, all three lanes to push out. It's a lot of net worth. Yeah, yeah, this lead is uh, just going to extend and extend. Okay, so now we have a Blade of Alacrity on Yamsun here. Okay. And you're, you're asking, what is that going to do? Yeah. Exactly. Can he please buy an armlet? <laughs> I really think, like, there's a sin in Dota. It's fine to go Radiance first. But armlet is the best item in the game on Life Steer. It's so cheap, and it gives you so much. And I don't think this Yasha is going to do anything for him. He's still going to get linked. He's still going to die in two seconds. It's not going to give you that much armor. Oh, armlet gives you a lot of damage, a lot of HP, and a lot of armor. It's... Amazing, but that's my ramp for now. I don't know. He, he he wants to embrace the speed. He wants to be Monk of Speed. Yeah. No, you can buy the Yasha after the armlet. So. Okay. <laughs> I'll, we'll let him know. I mean, like I said, there's no absolutes in Dota, but maybe buying boots on at least three of your heroes in the game and buying an armlet on life's the remind. Those are the two. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Write that down, kids. So now are looking to uh, put up some sort of defense on this tower. Obviously, Mu is not with them, but uh, in a way, Mu is always with them because he's got True. an ultimate. Yeah, he can always join the fight. And it's a strong ultimate now, too. He did complete the Agnum Scepter. So duration's longer. You get the evasion, get more heal. It's not easy to fight into, actually. It's a very powerful timing. Yep, yep. The Nouns are trying to make some sort of use of it by defending this bottom tower. Getting rid of the wolves as well. This has been very annoying for them, those scouting wolves. But, you know, shop why they come forward here. Rage early from Yamsen here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is all that Rebellion need. They're like, all right, you've raged. That means the tower's off. Like, that's literally what it's coming down to this game at the moment. These tiny, tiny spells, but any minute advantage which Nouns gives up, shop is like, yeah, now you're not strong enough. If you're not 100%, you're at 0%. Yeah, it's starting to look like, unfortunately, a very Shopify-esque game when he, they're playing in the North American region here. Just dominant laning stage into having a draft that can take objectives into methodically playing the map and not feeling like you can do much about it if you're announced. And I agree, they, there's not much they can do here. Like, their infest target is what this game? Yasha finished though. Look at him go. Yeah, I mean, look Blimey. at him go. I mean, regardless of his build, they're, they're just so far behind. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like his build is what lost the game, right? Of course, and it's definitely not gonna win them the game either. So I think right now the way they need to be itemizing is getting the most cost efficient items that they can possibly get to help them fight right now. And they also need to take in fights where they have a major number advantage, which they do. But in the case of uh, Rebellion, they've been really good at dodging ganks, especially RTZ. So they've been trying on nouns. They just have not been able to find anything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
they've been making the movements, but nothing's really connecting. But it's also the case of like, it's really, really hard with the heroes they have to set up for a single kill. They don't have that kind of strong, blinking, stun kind of hero. It's basically a Rubik. It's all you're really looking at. Maybe a Pangolier, but even then, it's it's not easy. It's high commitment to go for the Rolling Thunder, so... Very, very hard for Nouns to actually set up on someone, and we are feeling that. Yeah, and speaking of cost-efficient builds here, Arteezy's doing one of those himself. Going to BKB, he needs it to survive. Go straight into Mask of Madness here. Wow. Not something... This is definitely not a Razor build you see a lot of, but he also kind of understands the state of the game right now. That he wants to hit a power spike right now that allows him to fight. And he realizes he's not like the hard carry of the game. So he does not going to take up a lot of net worth. And he's going to buy items that just helps him hit his peak a little bit faster. No, no, no. It's, it's all about the speed. He saw the Yasha and he's like, I need speed. I got to catch him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, sure. 30 movement speed from the Mask of Madness. This isn't Dodo anymore. It's a drag race. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's fine too. Then maybe next he should queue up his own Yasha. Yep. Sableye going to pop the uh, ultimate here, but uh, also stolen oh. by Lela. So he's going to be running around as well. Everyone's just kind of running and rolling. And well, I mean, Husky's died. That's about it at the moment. There's Shop an flight. invest. Looking for more. Oh, this is big. They get on Sagana here, who's got Yamsun inside of him. Yamsun jumping out the other side. The ultimate coming in from the Dawnbreaker as well. What can they get done though? Shopify are just kiting it out. And now Moon is in the fight. They do find Fly, but that's about it. Yamsun trying to look for a target. Decides to try and break down by the wall. But the Wii summons there again. Stolen ultimate once again from the Rubik. Here just not really Arteezy. landing on anyone. But Saberlight has gone down. Arteezy linking up with Yamsun here. Trying to bring down the Lifestealer. Forcing him out of the fight as Gunner just dies as a side thought. And now Yamsun's going to fall as well. Shopify turning up to the fight with all their heroes and even though they do lose Saber Light, they bring down three in response. Yeah, I mean, that fight looked okay at first for downs here, getting those kills here, but the moment RTC was able to join that fight, he ran directly, knowing that he was needed there. But it was a good read by downs too. They saw RTC in the top lane, so like, this is our fight. And I 100% agree, they had to take that fight there. So, good attempt there, but net worth lead is just a little too much. They took too long to kill the Disruptor, even, who's already sitting on just drums, tranquils, with the fluffy hat. It's a very tanky boy. <laughs> It's that fluffy hat. It is the fluffy hat. It took him that little bit of extra HP, or maybe it was the Yash on the life steer not being able to do the damage to kill him. Who knows? Maybe a little bit of both. Absolutely. And it, it was actually four dead in the end because Husky did. The fight took so long that Husky respawned, so he was alive at the end of it, but he was the first one to go down. Uh, it's the life uh, of an undying. It is indeed. And honestly, like it, it's so hard to play this game, it feels like, for now, because you can't keep anyone inside that old but for the Dawnbreaker, like, sure, you keep your heroes alive a bit longer, but, I mean, Shopify don't really have a draft which is going to run out of power in fights or anything like that, you know? It's not like they need to win these fights in the first five seconds, so... Seems conceptually a little tricky as they move on to Yamsa oh, here. He out. does get the rage off somehow. Okay. I guess the, just the corner of that edge there just wasn't hit by the Static Storm, and Fly will just pay for it. Unlucky Fly. Just a little bit... Not the best placing of the Static Storm there. No, no, it's got to be said. But it was really close. <laughs> it looked like it was <laughs> it covered. Looked like it, it should have yeah. been fine, but uh, very thin margin. Yeah, unfortunate. Very unfortunate. But yeah, just to go back to your point of uh, nouns and how this game is hard, it's absolutely really hard. You don't even have the better laking scaling lineup here, and you're down 13k gold. So, how do you get back into this? Maybe they can take a roach fight. Maybe you can somehow get a pick off. But right now. Abed has not been very generous with wanting to play over-aggressive and feeding away any kills here. He's playing very reserved and making sure he does not give back any of that net worth he has been taking away from them. Now, at the moment, Yamsun sees any danger in the top lane as well, just rage TP out. That is one side thing at least. He can kind of sit on lanes, on side lanes, push them up pretty far and has the rage TP to oh, get himself smoke. out of most situations. Gunner has been seen though. Blink away, but immediately glimpsed. There's a counter uh, ultimate coming out as the... Static Storm comes through. Doesn't yeah, really land onto one. anyone, though. And now, Mu, he might have just leaped into his deck here with that ultimate, as they'll take down Husky. That'll be the first target. Save light on top of Mu as well. Mu getting very, very low. The kisses. Will it be enough? No, it won't. Mu gets away. Well, they only lose Husky. He does buy back here. Gonna try to find oh, the puck do, with the Rolling Thunder. Not gonna work, though. And uh, yeah, you can see he's running for it, Fly, but not gonna connect. So Shopify, they will just own this part of the map now. Oh, there's a... There's a life stealer inside the uh, <laughs> the ancient. Okay. Yeah. I guess you can do that. You can steal the the heart of the lichen. That's one way of doing it. But the moment. Oh, he gets to keep it. Interesting. Yep. I didn't know that because he took a new one on Saberlight here. 
God damn, he's like, he's like a mech but pilot he has his now. Own, yeah. <laughs> this is some anime I shit. I mean, you get the radiance burn here, too. So. Let's go. What's up, kids? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they do have a lot of uh, physical uh -oh. damage here. Right, he's going instant silence. Oh. He get the rage off. Whoa, how did they time that? He's trying to get away. The Yasha isn't going to work. Yes, it is. The rage is there, but the physical damage is too much. Yamsun with a bit of a clowny death there, has to be said. And now they move over, and they're going to beat down Husky as well. A die back from the Undying. Uh, I think that's going to be a Shopify Rebellion rush somehow. As, uh, oh, Abed's not done. Tier this is Abed's arc here to start jumping in the base. <laughs> Pump the brakes there, kid. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he, he's chilling a little bit now. Gives away base shift. Nope. Go Gunner's Gunner. now giving it a try. Uh, All right. Yeah, Gunner's. Uh, Everyone gets a turn in the pit. This uh, is like one of those games, right? Where just like, let's do all the desperate shit we can think of and hope something works. <laughs> Lelis is just lying dead <laughs> yeah. in the base. It's like... <laughs> that was such a comedic cut. Just the Rubik corpse face down on the ground. Yeah. Oh, no. There's not much hope for this game. I'm trying to find any, like, way to give Downs the benefit of the doubt of how they can come back in this game. It's going to have to be some serious fountain diving, I yeah, think, Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, if there's if there's ever a guy, you know, like, uh, they're kind of like sailors at sea, Shopify Rebellion, and the fountain is like the sirens of old, drawing them in. They can never quite resist, but... But how does a puck die to the fountain? Yeah. RTC is going to have a satanic butterfly. That build is meant to die to the fountain. <laughs> they're he's, preparing for it. He's gearing up for it. They're like, right, what's the one way we can lose this game? They're asking the same question. And Yeah. I mean, I guess crit does not have an Ags blink to save people in the fountain, so all right, we'll see. Even in the fountain here, I think Arteezy is going to kill at least three heroes. Better hope our buybacks are ready if you're nouns. Yeah, that's that's not good. We need to have our buybacks in case Arteezy ends up in our fountain, guys. That's your best play option you got right now. And it is what it is. It is. Yamsun, he, see, he sees that ancient creep again. He's like, ooh, that looks tempting. Uh, he's going to go and take some chunks out of uh, Arteezy, but... I say chunks, it's more like little thin wafer slices. That's best committed there. Yeah. Has to invest inside Gunner to stop himself getting glimpsed. Rage was on cooldown. I guess Nouns can always go for the play that maybe Rebellion disconnect and can't reconnect. But unfortunately, the technology is there now where <laughs> yeah. it just takes a bit of time, but they can get this yeah. game rolling again. So A bit of running down mid again. Yeah. I enjoyed that last time. Well, we will see, but I think this is just going to be the a very much so Rebellion knows the game's over. They're going to walk down a lane, and now they're going to have to find something clever. Speaking of something clever. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. all right, it works. They've got Fly. Let's see if they can finish him off. The Rage there from Yam, so they're just going to drop down the ultimate on top of Halski to try and kill him off. Moo also disrupting on the back lines, but on the front, it is Yamsun who's in trouble. Arteezy, can he finish the job? Yamsun running away. Look at him go. The Sanjin Yasha doing work, but unfortunately, the Pangolier has fallen down. Two heroes dead, three on the side of Yams. Actually, the buyback comes through. Moo, he's still on the back, and they kind of turned him as an afterthought. He's going to get taken down by Saber Light as well. Looking like we're heading for the curtains here, folks, as Shopify Rebellion and on the high ground, smacking away at the tier three. Still no GG coming out from Nouns just yet, but they're going to do everything they can to try and stay in this game. Gonna just trying to disarm, doesn't even land that. As long as they have spells to give, they'll keep oh, throwing them. Oh, oh, it's not enough. They even throw him into the fountain with the telekinesis, but yeah. Gonna still dies. They're just too strong at this point. But unfortunately, the net worth lead is insurmountable at this point. The hero matchups, you don't have anything special in your playbook here to deal while being behind as well. They had a strategy in mind, it just oh, unfortunately no. didn't work out. <laughs> oh no, indeed. That's not how that was meant to go. That's a dead yam, son. Lysila, he's going to fall. And there it is. There your it GG is. comes out. Shopify Rebellion with a hell of a start to this series. Absolutely wiping the floor with Nouns here in game number one. Oh my goodness. I mean... That just that just didn't go to plan at all. Like from the lanes <laughs> onwards, there was just no hope, and and I don't think we'll be seeing. It.